if you're looking for sound quality, you do not need to spend more money. Though it's natural to ask yourself if maybe you should spend a little extra dough to get something better. Money alone ain't gonna do it. It's not that simple, and there's no correlation between price and sound quality. So stop second-guessing yourself, stop reading hi-fi forums, and watching YouTube- now, we aren't the first people to note this, and there's plenty of studies by people way smarter than I am about how there isn't a correlation between sound quality and price. However, these studies are now quite old, and in the intervening years, there have been a lot more headphones released that might show a different relationship, and we've been gathering data for years about these headphones. By the way, big thanks to Brebart, Olive, Welty, Konsarapur, McMullen, Temi, Sondergaard, and Tatarunas. Also, if you're watching, Steve, I'm sorry. I never returned your water bottle. It's in Cambridge somewhere. Over the last few years, we here at SoundGuys have tested literal hundreds of audio products in our lab and even have the first preference curve validated for over ears and in ears on the latest gen testing apparatus, the B&K 5128. And in 2023, we began collecting data to feed head acoustics and their multidimensional audio quality scores, or MDAC algorithm. So after a couple years worth of collecting this data, we figured a pool of over 150 headphones was enough to take a peek at some trends. While this is on the lower end of usable samples, it's worthwhile to see if our observations support our prior assumptions. Now, before I show you the data, here's a quick little refresher on how MDAX works. These scores are derived from huge listener studies over several years and a machine learning algorithm built to predict the mean opinion scores of this large cohort. The three subscores, timbre, distortion, and immersiveness are then derived from these test samples. These scores are on a one to five scale with one being the lowest and five being the best. Simple stuff to parse here and even simpler to plot. Just remember that this is a projected mean opinion score and not something that will reflect everyone's experiences all the time. It's a description of what a broad group of people would most likely report. So what does all our data tell us? Are we wrong? Have we discovered something new about sound quality? Will Goku defeat Majin Buu? Tune in next week on... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the products we've tested with MDAC so far, there isn't a strong relationship between price and performance. Similarly, there isn't a strong correlation between the highest scoring products and a price bracket. Variation from our linear regression is quite high, and there doesn't seem to be much we can tease out of this plot. So what's going on here? This data does not surprise me in the least, because I have waded through this for so long, and I can tell you that the days of extremely crappy audio products is coming to an end. There are still crappy audio products, but extremely crappy audio products are going away. And even the things that have given us the most grief over the years are largely memories. I have to tell you, I was pretty scarred by the Sacker International Gummy Bear earphones, and I'm happy to report I don't see many things reminiscent of those anymore. Additionally, when you buy really expensive headphones, you're typically buying for a form factor, materials, aesthetics, or a very specific thing out of your headphones, so a high price here isn't necessarily aimed at getting the more crowd-pleasing sound quality. So let's cut the pool down to everything that's $500 or below. Hmm, not much better. It seems that other factors like product type are more closely related to sound quality metrics than price. And indeed, if you were to segment this data, you'd find that true wireless earbuds are more people-pleasing on average, but it's IEMs that really wreck the curve here. Of 20 models in our database, all but one of them score above a 4.7. This product type appears to have a really high performance floor in general and a very low average price. But 20 models isn't enough to be very significant in our pool and there is plenty of models we haven't tested yet, so take this with a grain of salt. But what about the subscores I mentioned before? Maybe the overall scores are generally good, but perhaps audio products nail the timbre and really stink at distortion or immersiveness. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Though immersiveness is all over the place, the pack of products we've tested has slightly lower distortion scores than the other two subscores. While this is an interesting result, it still doesn't get us any closer to drawing a correlation between price and performance. So, what does this mean for you? Well, it means two things. One, spending more money on its own isn't going to get you better sound unless you already know what you're looking for and spending more money would unlock that specific product for you. And two, to get a better understanding of your preferences, you should read sites like SoundGuys or other measurement sites to make notes on what particular features of sound 
you enjoy, and then make your decisions based on what you observe about yourself over time. Spending more money isn't necessarily going to get you the results you want, so put that out of your mind. Try to figure out what you want first. There are plenty of affordable products out there, and you don't have to empty your bank account to get something good. But just being able to separate the wheat from the chaff is a much more involved job. Let us help. If you heard that bit about IEM sounding good and want to give some a spin, check out the review by my colleague JC about the Meze Audio Alba. Pretty good video. Wrap it up! Nice! <laughs>